Alright, this video is over right triangle trigonometry, which for the most part should be nothing but review for most of you, so it should be fairly easy. Alright, so recall that we define sine and cosine as the relationship between y and r and x and r based on this scenario right here. This is our easy scenario where we have a triangle inside of a circle, angle theta, radius r is the hypotenuse, x is the bottom length, y is the vertical length, very easy. Now imagine if we were to take that triangle out of the circle, we would have a standard right triangle, right? Keep in mind that it must be a right triangle. Now, the angle we're talking about is theta, and instead of referring to the side over here as y, the vertical height, that's just the side that's opposite of our angle. We have the side down here, instead of calling that x, that's the side that's adjacent to our angle, and then we have our hypotenuse, instead of calling it a radius, it's our hypotenuse. This is just more of a general triangle unrelated to a circle. The cool thing is that these same relationships apply. We know that sine, remember from above, is y divided by r, well for us, that's the the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And uh, cosine is, we know, x over r, but for our triangle here, that's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And lastly, tangent, we defined as y over x, but again, for us, that is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So this is a way to help us understand right triangle trigonometry. Again, it's using our sine, cosine, tangent functions within a right triangle. Now, one way to help us remember this, you probably have learned, is the phrase so Ka toa. Okay, this just helps us remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Hopefully that is very, very, very simple. Now again, this is all based on this scenario where you identify the angle you're talking about, the side directly next to it is the adjacent side, adjacent means attached to, the side across from it is the opposite, and we always know that the longest side across the 90 degree angle no matter what is the hypotenuse. So let's put this formula to work and let's see if we can make it use of it. Okay, so here's a situation we have a, a right triangle with these sides. Now here's our angle theta. 8 would be the opposite side, 15 would be the adjacent side, and 17 is clearly the hypotenuse across the 90 degree angle. So if we wanted to find sine of alpha, we would just say, well, that's the opposite 8 over the hypotenuse 17. Done. Easy. That's how simple this is. Cosine of alpha would be the adjacent side 15 over the hypotenuse of 17. Tangent of alpha would be the opposite 8 over the adjacent 15. Extremely, extremely easy. Nothing difficult at all. If any of those fractions could be reduced, please do so. If there ended up being any square roots and denominators, make sure you get rid of them in the denominator. All right, when working with the general right triangles, the same rule applies regardless of the orientation of the triangle. In fact, we can evaluate the sine and cosine of either of the two acute angles in the triangle. So again, we could flip this triangle around any way we want. It doesn't have to be set up in a specific way. The understanding, though, is that there's always two angles besides the 90 degree angle. So if we're looking at alpha, if our focus is on alpha right here, the hypotenuse doesn't change. The hypotenuse is across on the right angle no matter what. But Across from alpha is our opposite side, and the adjacent side is the one that's right next to alpha. However, if I turn my attention and decide to start talking about the other angle, beta, the opposite and the, the, opposite and the adjacent do switch around. Now, this side over here is considered the opposite side for beta, and this side up is here is considered the adjacent side for beta. Once again, the hypotenuse cannot change no matter what, because the hypotenuse is always directly across in the right angle no matter what. So this allows us to talk about any right triangle orientated in any way, talking about any of the angles no matter what. So here's another example where we simply have our triangle orientated, orientated in a different way. So I could talk about sine of alpha. Sine of alpha, again, if I'm talking about alpha, the opposite is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. If I'm talking about cosine of alpha, the adjacent is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5. If I turn my attention and talk about beta now, sine of beta is going to be the opposite, which is now 3 for beta. Hypotenuse is still 5. Cosine of beta is now going to be the adjacent 4, and the hypotenuse is 5. So what we notice here is that when we're working with angles alpha and beta, the opposite acute angles in a uh, right triangle, 
when we wrote, you know, kind of flip them, sine of alpha is equal to sine of beta. They're both three-fifths. That's because according to alpha, the adjacent is three, but according to beta, the opposite is three. So again, it flips around. Same thing for sine and cosine of beta, or sine of alpha and cosine of beta. Again, our opposite and our adjacents flip around. So it really does matter who you're looking at and what particular angle you are talking about. Here's another example where we kind of need to draw the picture. It gives you a description of the triangle. You just have to draw it. It does not have to be a perfect drawing. As you will see, mine will not be perfect whatsoever. A right triangle is drawn with angle alpha opposite a side of length 33, beta opposite a side of length 56, and hypotenuse is 65. So I'm just going to draw a right triangle. Notice it's not very pretty. Make sure you identify which is the right triangle. Now, it did say the hypotenuse is 65, so I know that that is the 65, clearly across from the right angle. Now, who do I call alpha? Who do I call beta. It really doesn't matter as long as you follow what the problem says. So if here's alpha, it says the side opposite of alpha is 33. So there we go. It's got to be opposite of alpha. And then if here's beta, then the side across or opposite of beta would be my 56. So there I go. How can I ensure that this is in fact a right triangle? Well, I do need to show that 56 squared plus 33 squared is in fact equal to 65 squared. And that is true. It does try. I just checked it on my calculator. You obviously can check it on yours if you want to. Now, they want me to find sine and cosine of alpha and beta. So let's do cosine of beta first. Okay, according to beta, the adjacent is 33. The hypotenuse is 65. Done. Sine of beta. Let's see here. Sine of beta, the opposite is 56. The adjacent, or I'm sorry, the hypotenuse is 65. Very, very, very simple. All right, let's go ahead and talk about cosine of alpha now. According to alpha, the adjacent is 56, and the hypotenuse is 65. Notice over here, that was sine of beta because I flipped it around. And lastly, sine of alpha is going to be the uh, opposite 33 divided by the hypotenuse 65. Once again, if any fractions can be reduced, please do so. But that is very, very, very simple. Okay, here's another example. Now, this time, notice what's going on here. I do have a right triangle, and I was told one side is 7, the other sides are unknown. But the good news is, I do know my angle. Now, the goal in this problem is to find the remaining two sides. All right, so here's what we have to think about. What do we know? We know the angle 30 degrees, and we know the side across from it is 7. So, who do we want to find first? Well, that's what you have to do. Identify what we want to find first. Well, A comes first in the alphabet, so let's go ahead and find A. All right, here's what I know. I know the opposite. I'm looking for the adjacent. Who deals with opposite and adjacent? Well, in case you're confused, talk to your friend, Sokotoa. Sokotoa is your friend who can allow you to use. Well, since I know the opposite and I'm looking for the adjacent, I'm going to use Toa. Tangent of an angle equals the opposite divided by the adjacent. Okay? So tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite 7 over the adjacent A. So now all i got to do is solve for A. To solve for A, I'm going to multiply by A. So I'm going to multiply the A over here. And now to finally solve for A, I'm going to divide both sides by tangent of 30. So I get A is 7 divided by tangent of 30 degrees. Now, what is tangent of 30 degrees? I guess that's what I need to figure out. Well, thank goodness you do have a unit circle, so you can find tangent of 30 degrees pretty easily just using your unit circle. Just make sure that you look on your unit circle and you try to figure it out. It's not that hard. So what you're going to do is you're going to um, find tangent or find 30 degrees on your unit circle. So please go ahead and do so now. You're going to look at the coordinates for 30 degrees. At 30 degrees, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe at 30 degrees, the y value is 1 half, and the x value is radical 3 over 2. So tangent of 30 degrees, remember tangent is y over x. So for me, that's going to be 1 half the y. And I'm going to, instead of dividing by the x, I'm going to multiply it by its reciprocal. The 2's cancel, and I get 1 over radical 3, which is better known as radical 3 over 3. Again, all I did was multiply top and bottom by radical 3. 
So now, to get my final answer for A, remember A is going to be 7 divided by tangent of 30, but I just used my unit circle to understand that the tangent of 30 is radical 3 over 3. And once again, I have to multiply by the reciprocal here because I don't like having a double fraction. I get 21 over radical 3, but once again, I don't like radicals in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply bottom top by radical 3, and I get 21 radical 3 over 3, but this could be cleaned up. The 21 and the 3 reduced to 7 radical 3. So quite a process, I know. Got a little bit sloppy there, but really the work behind it was pretty easy. Identify what you're looking for, tangent. I know that tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over the adjacent, so that's 7 over A. Multiply by A, divide by tangent of 30. Then take a moment to figure out what tangent of 30 degrees is. We did that, tangent of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 3. And then all you got to do is do some simple math to clean it up. Not too bad. All right. Uh, I actually need to erase a little bit of this real quick here. So again, all you got to do is just hit rewind if you want to go back and see that. But I need to erase a little bit to make some room so I can find B now. All right. Let's go ahead and find B. So I'm going to circle B. And now let's see here. I know that I have 7 is the opposite, B is the hypotenuse. Who uses opposite and hypotenuse? That's sine. So I know that sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite 7 over the hypotenuse B. So once again, I have to solve for B by multiplying both sides by B, because I don't want it to be in the denominator. And then I get that B is 7 divided by sine of 30 degrees. All I have to do is figure out what sine of 30 degrees is. Well, go back once again to your unit circle and look at 30 degrees. Here's 30 degrees, radical 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And sine is the Y value. So I know that sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Well, at least there's no radicals this time. So I'm now going to multiply by its reciprocal, and I get a nice, beautiful, perfect 14. So in this drawing, I know that B is beautiful 14. Well, I can't really read that very well, can you? Let's see here if I can get a nicer color here. All right, B is 14, and I found that A is 7 radical 3. So it's just using trigonometry to locate those remaining values. All right, here's another picture, or another problem where you have to draw the picture, excuse me. A right triangle has one, has an angle of pi over 3 and hypotenuse of 20 degrees. So let's go ahead and draw this right triangle. Again, it does not have to be perfect. And it has an angle of pi over 3, so I'm just going to make this angle pi over 3. And it has a hypotenuse of 20. It says find the unknown sides and angles of the triangle. Well, let's first with the unknown sides. Let's see, I'm going to call this W and this X. Call whatever you want. Now, let's see here. I know an angle, and I know the hypotenuse. So once again, I got Chief So Ka Toa here. He can help me here. All right, let's see here. Let's find X first. X is adjacent. 20 is the hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So I know the cosine of pi over 3 is equal to the adjacent X over the hypotenuse 20. Hmm, easy. All I got to do to solve for x is multiply by 20. So I get x is 20 times cosine of pi over 3. All you have to do is go to your unit circle and determine what is cosine of pi over 3. So take a quick second to look at your unit circle, find pi over 3. I believe the y value is radical 3 over 2, and the x value is 1 half. So cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Cosine is the x value. So I get 20 times 1 half, which is 10. Very, very simple to find x. All right, now let's take a moment here to try to find w. w is opposite. I know the 20 is the hypotenuse. So I'm, now I'm going to use uh, sine, because sine of pi over 3 is going to be the opposite w over the hypotenuse 20. So once again, to solve for w, very simple. i got to do is multiply by 20. So 20 times sine of pi over 3 equals w. And now I'm going to quick a, take a quick second to figure out what sine of pi over 3 is. So go back to pi over 3. Here it is right here. Here's the point. And let's see. Sine is the y value. So I get 20 times radical 3 over 2 for w. The 20 and the 2 can reduce. So that would be 10 radical 3 for w. So very, very simple. w would be 10 radical 3. Very, very easy to take your time and figure that out. All right, now let's try to do a problem that's a little bit more realistic, like a real-world problem here. All right, to find the height of a tree, a person walks 
to a point 30 feet from the base of the tree and measures the angle from the ground to the top of the tree to be 57 degrees. Find the height of the tree. So here's my setup. We walked from the base of the tree 30 feet away. We looked up 57 degrees and now we're trying to find the height h of that tree. Well, let's see here. I have chief so ka Toa to help me out here. I am looking for the opposite. I know the adjacent. So that means I'm going to use tangent because tangent deals with opposite and adjacent. So tangent of 57 degrees equals the opposite h divided by the adjacent 30. All I have to do to solve for h is multiply both sides by 30. So h equals 30 times tangent of 57. Now at this point, I don't know what tangent 57 degrees is, nor can I look it up on my unit circle because it's not one of my perfect angles. So I'm going to have to get an approximate answer using my calculator. Just make sure you're in degree mode since we are working with 57 degrees. And type in ta uh, 30 times tangent of 57 and you get 46 point one. I actually would round to 46.20 feet. Okay, very, very simple to do that. All you need to do is take a quick second on your calculator and you're going to have to get an approximate answer. All right, last problem of the day. Here's example number seven. A little bit of a trickier problem, but we'll walk ourselves through it. A person standing on the roof of a 100-foot building is looking towards a skyscraper a few blocks away. So here's the person on the top of the roof. They're looking up at a skyscraper a few blocks away. She measures the angle of... Uh, declination, that's the angle looking down to the bottom of the skyscraper to be 20 degrees. And that is exactly 100 feet from the top of that building. So they show you that that's 100 feet from here to here. Okay. Because remember, her building is 100 feet tall, so obviously straight across is 100 feet. All right, she also measures that the angle of inclination to the top of the skyscraper is 42 degrees. So that is looking up to the top of the skyscraper is 42 degrees. So now what happens here is we have two right triangles. We have the small one on the bottom and the big one on top. I need to find the total height h. Well, I already know that part of h is 100, right? This part over here is 100. I need to basically find a. If I could find a, all I got to do is add 100 to it, and I could find the total height of that skyscraper. So how do I find a? Well, if I look at this big triangle right here, I'm going to outline this big triangle in green. I know that the angle is 42 degrees, but I don't know x, I don't know a, in fact, I don't know any of the side lengths. That's a problem. I need to know at least one side length to continue on. So I'm going to look at this bottom triangle first. The bottom triangle I'm going to resolve, I'm going to refer to is kind of this magenta color. So if we look at this bottom triangle, I do know that the a side opposite of 20 is 100, and I'm looking for this adjacent x, because x is the only side that's shared between these two triangles. So now I'm going to go ahead and use tangent. I know that tangent of 20 degrees equals the opposite 100 divided by the adjacent x. Again, I'm thinking about this bottom triangle here. And if I can find x, I could then use it to help me find a. So let's find x. Let's see here. All i got to do is multiply both sides by x. x times tangent of 20 is 100. That means x is 100 divided by tangent of 20 degrees. Once again, 20 degrees is not on my unit circle, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my calculator. 100 divided by tangent of 20, I get approximately 274.75 feet. Now that is x. x is 274.75. Now, how can I use that to help me find A? Well, look at the green triangle now. If I look at the green triangle now, I know the adjacent. I'm looking for the opposite A. So once again, tangent of 42 degrees is going to be the opposite side A divided by the adjacent, which I just found, X, 274.75. How do I find A? All i got to do is multiply the 274 over. So I'm just going to take A will be 274.75 times tangent of 42 degrees. Once again, 42 degrees is not on my unit circle, so I'm going to have to multiply by tangent of 42 degrees on my calculator, and I get that A is 247.38 feet. That's A right there. Pretty, pretty simple there. Now, to find H, the total height of that skyscraper, I'm going to go ahead and add these two numbers together, because remember, that's A. I'm going to add 100 to that, because that's the base of where I'm looking at. So if I take 247.38 and add 100, I get that the total height of the skyscraper is 347.38 feet. Once again, H is a combination of 100 plus A. That's why I had to find A and then add 100 to it. All right, so hopefully that video was nice and simple, understanding how I can use trigonomic functions to understand right triangles.